Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of the bin part command found within an Autodesk Inventor part file. If you want more easy to understand and practical content like this, made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, make sure you check out the other videos in my Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's get started. Okay, everybody, so here we are in our part file. And of course, what you see in front of you is a wrench, also known as a spanner. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be bending the back of this wrench. So I've already pre-bent this. OK, and what this allows us to do is it allows us a little bit easier access to bolts or whatever we need to loosen that is maybe deep within a machine or something like that. So it gives us a little bit more reach. So in this particular case, we're going to go back and revert this to just a flat wrench. And we're going to sketch on the surface here on this top surface, to be exact. And we'll use a line as a reference to bend this part around, okay? So this is a pretty simple command, but it's really powerful and it saves you a lot of time in comparison to actually uh, modeling up this angle yourself. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this. So we'll go over to the other model that I have here and you'll see I went ahead and uh, pre-sketched this line onto the surface, but let's go ahead and take a step back and just do this again. Okay, so I'll just delete that sketch. And as you can see here, this is a flat wrench. OK, and uh, so we're going to go ahead and start a 2D sketch on this top surface here. So we'll left click. All right. So let's go ahead and create our reference line in which we're going to bend this part around. So um, to do that, I'm just going to project some geometry. I want to project these two sides here and then we'll go up to line and let's go ahead and drop this line somewhere along this projected edge. So that's fine. And we'll drop this other end point of this new line on this edge. Now we want to make sure our new line is perpendicular to both of these lines in this particular case, because we don't want to bend this on an angle. We want to bend it um, just straight across. OK, so now let's go ahead and set a distance. We'll go ahead and set a distance from this line to this end point here that's on this curve. And uh, we'll set a distance of 0 0.200 inches. Yeah, this is uh, basically just arbitrary in this case. I'm just picking some dimension just to get the point across. So now uh, we see our sketch is fully defined and that's how we want to keep it. We'll go uh, right click and click OK. And let's finish the sketch. So now that we have our sketch, we have all of the conditions met to actually use the bend part command. So we go up to the modify section of the ribbon and click bend part. Once we click bin part, we get a command window that pops up. And uh, so let's start at the top left hand corner and we'll work our way down into the right. So uh, here you'll notice we have our properties tab. So this is where all of the main parameters reside for this command. So you'll notice there's a little X here in this tab. We can click that to close the command. Let's go back. OK, um, we can click this little plus here and it gives us some access to additional menus if we want to use those. Moving over to the right, we have our advanced settings menu. So this is identical to extrude and revolve in the sense that you have some options available to you. In this case, we only have one additional option and that's single enter to finish command. All that means is we hit the enter key on the keyboard once and it finishes the command. So let's go ahead and give you a demo of that. Notice that it's checked off here. That means this particular option is active. So let's show you that. So we'll just select the bin line. OK, and uh, just notice how the wrench is bent in the wrong orientation. That's easily fixed. I'll get into more detail on how to switch this around, but I'm just going to uh, switch this real quick so that you can see how this works. OK, and there we go. Now it's showing us a preview of the bend at the end of our part. Uh, one thing I want you to note is that it's deformed the end a little bit. I will show you how we can fix that in just a moment. But again, we're taking a look at this option here in the advanced settings menu that says single enter to finish command. Again, it's checked off. It's active. So now we can hit enter a single time on the keyboard. And when we do that, it executes the command all in one step. Now, I went ahead and took a step back so that we can take a look at the various parameters in this command window. So let's go ahead and start out with the input geometry section with the bin line selection filter. OK, so like all the other selection filters in Autodesk Inventor, if it has a blue line at the bottom, that means it's currently active. If it does not have a blue line, that means we cannot select anything that is relevant to this particular selection filter. So you see how I'm hovering over this line. I can't select it. 
I click in the box, activate it. It's active because it has the blue line at the bottom. And now I can select that bin line. And when I click on that, it's just going to take a second to load. And then it's going to show me a preview of that bin. And as you can see there, it's showing me the preview. OK, so now let's go ahead and move over to the right within the selection filter. You can click this little X to deselect your entry. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the behavior section. So starting at the top, we have our side selection. So uh, we can either select bin side A, bin side B, or bin both sides, okay? So let's select side A. And as you can see there, it bends upward on this side, or in other words, side A is bent upwards. We can also go to side B, okay? And that's what you saw before. So the back end of this is bent upwards, or we can bend both sides. So let's go ahead and do that now. OK, and there we go. So it took a little bit to finish the preview, but there we go. Um, both sides are now bent. OK, so depending on what you're trying to do, you have plenty of options available to you there. Let's go back to side B. OK, moving over to the right, we have our selector style drop down menu. So it's currently set to icons. So all of our selections are little icons or these little pictures here. We can go ahead and click on drop down and it changes that to a drop down menu. OK, so whatever suits your personal taste, you have a couple options there available to you. Now let's go ahead and move down and take a look at the direction section. The section dictates which direction the bend goes in. So currently it's going in the upward direction. If we click this other option here, it will flip the direction and it will bend the back of that wrench downwards. So there you go. We see our preview and it's actually bending that back piece downwards. OK, and uh, again, moving over to the right, you have your selector style drop down menu. And uh, now let's take a look at the method section. The method section essentially allows you to dictate what parameters you want to use to define the bend on this part. So currently it's set to radius and angle, meaning that we can enter a radius parameter and an angle parameter. OK, we can pull this drop down menu open. We have access to a radius and arc length option. OK, so it changes our parameters to a radius and arc length. We can also change it to arc length and angle. OK, so just depending on what parameters you want to use, you have some flexibility there. Now let's go back to radius and angle. That's the one I want to use. OK, and then um, so again, we have our radius parameter here. I actually want to change that. So you may remember me mentioning that the top part of this back portion is deformed after it's bent. So let me zoom in on that. OK, so you can see how this part is actually bent as well. That's because the radius parameter is set too high. So let's go ahead and set it to something smaller. So I'll set it to a quarter of an inch. OK, it'll take a second to populate there. OK, and then now let's set the angle to something smaller. OK, so let's set this to 20 degrees. OK, and now that we've adjusted our parameters to something more suitable for this particular case, you'll see that we have the proper bend on our part, along with no deformation on this back piece here. OK, so that's really critical. Make sure that when you're using this tool, you're not accidentally deforming critical parts of your model without uh, being aware of it, because this can sneak up on you if you're not being careful. Now, let's go ahead and continue down to the advanced property section. In this section, we have an option called bend minimum. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to select which portions of the part body are bent if the line intersects multiple areas of that part body. Now, from what I could gather in older versions of Autodesk Inventor, what would happen is, say, for example, I have this line that only stretches across these two tabs here on this little metal piece. Um, it would propagate the bend all the way across regardless. However, in the newer versions, if I select this line, it's only going to pick up the pieces of the part body that touch this bin line. OK, um, so again, in older versions, you would check this option and designate um, what you wanted to bend and what you did not want to bend. In this particular case, you control that based on what your bend line touches. So uh, here you can see that only these two tabs are being bent. Let's go ahead and change that sketch so that it touches this tab here. It doesn't even have to go all the way across. It can just sort of end up in the middle somewhere. We'll go to finish sketch and let's go back to bend part. Now, when we select that line again, it bends all three tabs. Now, let's say, for example, we have multiple solid bodies in our model. Going over here to our model browser, you'll notice that I have solid one and solid two. Solid one is this piece here on the left. Solid two is this piece here on the right, even though they share the same seam line here. So they're, uh, you know, conjoined here along this line. Um, they are two separate solid bodies. Now, let's go take a look at what bend part does 
when we have multiple solid bodies here. So we'll click on that. And I want you to notice here in the input geometry section, we have a solid selection filter. So let's go ahead and pick up our bin line and you'll notice it only bends the tabs on solid one. We can actually select solid two instead by hovering over the separate solid body here in the uh, design space, or we can go to the model browser and pick it up there. So we'll just click on our second solid body and you'll see it only bends that part, even though the line touches this other solid. Okay, so this is pretty helpful for when you have multiple solids in your model and you need some extra control. Now, before I go ahead and wrap up this video, I want to talk about the apply and create new button here in the bottom right hand corner. OK, so that's this little plus sign. So first, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and pick a bin line. So I'll go ahead and pick this bin line here and we'll let this solid here on the left side be bent first. So I want you to notice that when I click this, it executes the command, but it keeps the command window open. Now we can move over to this other sketch, click that bend line, and it'll bend this solid. Okay, so you can chain together multiple iterations or execute the command multiple times while keeping the command window open when you use this button in the bottom right hand corner. If you're just only executing the command once and uh, you just want to move on from there, go ahead and click OK or hit Enter. That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Part Creation Module, where I gave you an overview of the bend part command. I really hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful and that you put what you've learned into practice so you can continue developing your skills as you work your way through these lessons. Also, before you watch the next video in the series, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content that will help you create the future you want for yourself. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you choosing to stop by and learn with me and I'll see you again soon.